You're listening to the Armchair Ninja podcast. Here is your host, Rich. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Armchair Ninja podcast on Friday, March 11th, 2016. My name is Rich, and with me this week to wrap up Team Ninja Warrior is Bijan. How are you making out? Woo! Go party time, man! It was a good episode. I loved it. (laughs) Yeah, it was awesome, and you called it. I gotta admit, you called it. Yep, yep. Hey, the final, the finalists, TMT and uh, Party Time, my number pick, or my number one picks, I should say, for uh, the finals, and they did not disappoint, man. It was, it was pretty good, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, it was a really good episode. Lots of cool stuff happened. A lot of things we would expect and a few things we wouldn't. So, uh, yeah, let's <laughs> yeah, get, let's get right to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a few surprises along the way. Yeah, overall, I mean, it's a great season, so the whole thing's wrapped up now. Um, so I guess overall, very successful uh, for the network, for the ninjas. I think uh, the fans all liked it. Really interested to see what they do with it the next time around, because it seems like it's definitely going to be back. Oh, yeah. I mean, they pretty much even confirmed it at the end of the episode, saying, we'll see you next season. Um yeah, it was a win-win all around. It was great, you know? Um, one thing that I've seen a lot from the Ninja community and the audience and as a whole online is a lot of people are taking a lot of, um, are giving a lot of criticism similar to what we've been doing when it comes to the formatting or the um, scoring structure of the show, you know? So I really hope that they take a lot of this criti- criticism to heart and kind of fix that whole kind of loophole about you know, pretty much the first round really having no precedence at all, no real, you know, um, there's no real stakes involved with it. So I'm pretty sure they're going to readjust and hopefully next season we'll we'll have an even better show and format. Yeah, I think that's a fair criticism to say that, you know, the first round not mattering and some of the people, well, some of the teams that did really amazing overall getting bumped out by people that really just by the team captains coming in and stepping up and and getting it done. It's a little frustrating, but at the same time, I I don't have a fix for it. So I don't like to criticize if I don't have a better solution, right? So with the time frame and with the teams and everything that they had to do, I don't have a better solution. So I think they just did phenomenal overall. So I'll just keep it positive and say, great job. I hope we get some more episodes so that we can... uh, have more of a elimination format, maybe some round robin. I'm not sure how, a, what a better system would be with more time, but overall everything was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. Um, for a first season, definitely good. I'm just looking forward to second season when they have, a they, they have the criticism, uh, available for them to kind of readjust and make some changes for the better. And I really hope they, uh, listen to the critics, you know, and yeah, if, if you want a suggestion, my number one suggestion would be just get points, and at the end of the episode, the two teams with the most amount of points goes on for the relay finals. That's my way of doing it. Oh, that would be one way to do it, I guess, yeah. But then the problem with doing stuff like that, though, uh, what I saw someone mention online was that you need every run to matter. Otherwise, what's the point? So if you if you're behind on points and you have no way of actually making it up, then it's the the runs become pointless, right? So, yeah, that's a good point too. Man, it's tough finding a good way of doing this. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure over the upcoming months we're going to hear a lot of different feedback from various people online, and hopefully, you know, they can uh, put the think tank to it to it, and uh, maybe get some some uh, really good format out. Yeah, if I was gonna one criticism I would have. I was a little disappointed in this episode, and I actually, it was funny, as disappointed as I was, I figured you were probably even more so. Uh, so we had the spin cycle again, and they didn't change at all for the, the finale. Yeah, I, I feel like some diversity is going to help a lot. I understand that maybe due to the filming structure, I mean, it looks like they only filmed this within like three or four days. And the location, maybe it was difficult, but maybe they can, you know, with the extra money that maybe the network's going to give them for next season due to the success of this, maybe they'll have more opportunities to switch a lot of the um, obstacles up because definitely diversity is going to make for a much more compelling show. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the spin cycle being back, I could live with that. Uh, it was the the fact that it was used for the finale too seemed a little off to me. And I wonder how yeah, long they right. had to as as a break there between. You know they they say these things sometimes, and I I don't 
I don't buy it. They didn't wait a couple of minutes and say that they had to run. You know, Team TNT would have way too much of an advantage if they did run that five minutes later. That's that seems a little crazy. That you know, that was really interesting. I'm like, wow, they didn't give them much of a break at all. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, if they said it, I, I got to give them the benefit of the doubt that it really happened because I don't really know why they wouldn't you know why they'd say that because it's not really going to be to the benefit of the show or anything to say that you know they they didn't give them a fair break i mean it would be more compelling to say hey they had a few hours of resting and everything but it sounds like they just went right into it maybe due to the filming schedules maybe just not to tire out the audience but yeah that that really is um unfortunate for team party time right yeah but they do i mean they do <laughs> don't kid yourself they definitely do uh lie about the the time gaps and things like that and the orders of the runs and stuff so oh yeah it's definitely i'm trying to think of why they would do it i guess it adds a little bit of dramatic tension and possibility of people complaining and stuff everybody if as long as we're talking about it they're happy right so yeah and you know um that's a very good point now i think about it they probably had the two final relays go back to back so they probably had team tnt win their relay and then right after that they had party time versus lab rats um running their relays and then they just went into the very finals yeah we'll have to check in on that i guess when we maybe can get some clarification we've got a couple of uh contacts that were there maybe we can uh get some information from, or actually if we can have somebody on the show they might be able to answer it for us yeah so let's get into it. Uh, we've got, starting off the episode, The Expendables versus Party Time. And for the first run, we had Jake versus... Oh, let's well, actually run through the names. I'm jumping to their just their first names for those <laughs> <laughs> who we've got. Uh, Jake Murray versus Alan Keneally. And uh, Jake recovered. That was awesome. I was really, really glad to see that because I, I thought it was a real unfair shake that he had he had to sit out and they actually moved on i was hoping that he was going to be back yeah and it sounds like it or at least it looks like he made a full recovery he really showed no slowing down or wasn't favoring his leg or his knee at all so i'm really glad that he he turned out to be um okay because he had a really really nasty fall that last episode um and yeah, it was a really good run also. I really like the whole flaring showing off they did afterwards, you know, on the warped wall. It's pretty cool, man. Yeah, and poor Alan, man. He <laughs> he's had a rough go. He did awesome. Like I, I don't remember him once really screwing up and he was like he was very consistent, he was very fast. Yeah, and he he's just, really fast for his size, right? Yeah, yeah. And he, he just ended up losing every run. Like it just seems like and not by much. Like he was always right there in contention, but just ended up losing out in the end. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but you know, what matters the most is he looked impressive in losing. And I think that's the most impressive take that you can, you can come out with. It's better to be impressive in losing rather than just being not memorable at all. Right. Yeah. I'm sure there's people that had, you know, that won a few races because somebody fell on the third or fourth obstacle and things like that, where they didn't really get to show what they could do. They just were there when someone else failed. Alan just had Mm -hmm. tough competition right along the board. Yeah, he had a rough go in terms of competition. <laughs> yeah, so from there we moved over to uh, Lucy Romberg versus Jennifer uh, Tavernier. And so we had the rookie versus a veteran. And that was a brutal fall, man. Lucy took a, a dive on the cargo net. It was uh, She was just rushing too much trying to uh, to get ahead. Yeah, she was just going a little too fast. Not much to say about this particular run because it was so abrupt, but... Yeah, um, you know, she took a risk and just didn't come out. I, I feel like uh, it, it's unfortunate. She's better than that. Yeah, I don't know if Lucy got to show off her skills through Team Ninja Warrior as much as we had hoped. Yeah, yeah, I expected a lot from her. But um, with that said, she I, she's still one of the top athletes in the women's or one of the f- top female athletes. Oh, for sure. And I loved her little the little promo video they did of her getting thrown up against the fence and doing all the cool stuff dude that was pretty awesome right <laughs> like, <laughs> it was, some people i don't notice it like like something I, I forget like a body's thrown towards a fence and all of a sudden you see her just flying off the other side like <laughs> it was pretty crazy 
Uh, so then we had the captain run. We had Brian Arnold versus Kevin Bull. And oh my God, I was excited to see that one. That was like, oh God, I like, it was really, that was one of the matchups that I really wanted to see. So it was cool. Yeah, as a bald guy, man, I'm rooting for both of these guys. And uh, <laughs> from afar, I was like, wait, who is who again? I was like, oh, wait, Kevin <laughs> uh, Bull's a little bit more buff. But uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of both these guys. Represent the baldness. And it's the, they said it was the closest match that they had through the whole thing. Seven one hundredth, one hundredth of a second between them. That's insane. Yeah, that was really close, right? Um, they they were pretty neck and neck. I mean, <laughs> couldn't get much closer than that. Um, big ups to Brian Arnold for making up a small deficit at the very end and coming so damn close, man. Yeah, they were both really impressive. I was glad to see Kevin Bowles had some kind of spotty runs along the way between USA versus the world and, and this at times. So it's it was nice to see this, this run to demonstrate because we know how good he is and how great he can do. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the second time around, they did a rematch, Brian versus Kevin, for the uh, tiebreaker. And Kevin missed a spin cycle, and Brian just plowed through without an issue. Like, it's all it took. It's just one little mistake, and that's it. Like, there was no room. Brian Arnold consistently through this whole thing just basically didn't didn't leave any room for someone to make a little error, even the tiniest of errors. Oh, yeah. And I'll talk about this later, but I'm really happy for Brian Arnold because I feel like this last season of American Ninja Warrior, he kind of get shunned more towards the background, and I think a lot of people were sleeping on just how impressive this guy's been on American Ninja Warrior. So I'm really glad that he got to show off his skills and kind of remind everybody just what he can do. Yeah, and showed that he's got a lot of speed, too. Uh, actually, yeah, it was point. on this week's uh, Wolfpack Ninja podcast, it was interesting hearing him talking about that and kind of giving the other guys a hard time about not doing enough cardio and not, uh, and that's why they were getting burned out on Team Ninja Warrior not making it up the warped wall. Uh, he was giving, uh, I think it was Dan Yeager that he was giving a hard time because he was, he was guest hosting, but he was definitely giving Noah a hard time about struggling to get up the warped wall. Well, I, I can't, I can't talk about anybody on that one because at the end, cardio is very important and you expect everybody would, would be training cardio on this, but the warped wall is such a beast of an obstacle to do, especially when you're burned out, you know? Yeah, and then of course Megan jumped in to uh to give them a hard time because she didn't miss the warped wall. <laughs> <laughs> I love Megan Martin. <laughs> yeah, and she I think she had a good point that we saw a lot of the women do it consistently. The ones that have done it in the past have done it pretty consistently on the show too. And I think it's because they can't take it for granted. They can't just relax and say, "Oh, whatever, I've done this a thousand times." They take their time and they make sure they they nail it when they have to do it. Yeah, they take the obstacle a little bit more seriously, right? Yeah. Uh, So anyway, moving on from there. So with that, Team Party Time had won. And we moved over to the Lab Rats versus Storm Team Morovsky. Very excited to see Joe and Rob and Mary Beth back. We had, uh, so we're kicking it off, we had uh, Rob Morofsky versus uh, Chris Wolcheski. And uh, what did you, what was your take on Rob's chances against Chris? <laughs> um, you know, uh, you know, um, mi- miracles can happen. That's all, you know, <laughs> th- things, things can happen. Hey, you know, he was doing really well at the very beginning. You know, he was um, getting the best of Chris Wolcheski, but... You know, Rob, um, he, he tends to make errors on, in, you know, he tends to make small mistakes that kind of trip him up. And uh, he just overlooks certain obstacles, man. And, yeah, he overlooked those dancing stones and it got the best of him. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just, at this point, it's just kind of fun to pick on Rob. You know, Rob, if you ever hear this, <laughs> we absolutely love you. I think you're really entertaining. I love his intensity. I think he's really great on the show. I love seeing him run, so... Yeah, yeah, I make fun, but I actually really enjoy Rob. Um, and number one thing about Rob is he's very young. Um, I feel like he has the potential to do really well on the show. Obviously, he has a physical, athletic a- attributes to do well. Um, I think he just needs to, I guess, um, 
warm up on the technical side of the obstacle running, and I think he'll do quite well. Yeah, he trimmed down a lot. They mentioned later, um, Joe harassed him into losing weight for the show. That's kind of funny. Um, so in this case, yeah, he tried to do that. I mean, how many of them actually were able to span that? We should I'd be interested to go back and see how many, many were actually able to jump that eight foot gap. Well, the, the more important question is what I have for everybody is, was it worth it? I mean, what, I, what I'm what i more interested in seeing is the people that did make the, the gap jump, did it really make a huge difference w- when it needed to? Um, you know, I understand doing that risk if you're behind, but if you're neck and neck with somebody, is that jumping that gap really worth it? That That's the question that I have. Yeah, I, I've got to think that it's almost never really worth it now that you say it, because really you're almost guaranteed even if you make it to stumble up a bit like you you know making the smaller step across that middle one's got to be better oh yeah i you know that that's how i see it um but who knows i mean at the end of the day athletes are athletes and they they know their bodies a lot better than you know i would so maybe it's just somebody looking at that obstacle and being i am 100 percent confident that confident that i can make this gap and sometimes it just doesn't work out for them yeah and i think you would see a lot more of them actually finish it successfully if it didn't wobble. Like if it was, if they were rigid, I think they would have made them pretty, you know, quite a few of them would have made it, but they're mm-hmm. forgetting the fact that it actually moves. It yeah. And that's what I love about this obstacle, man. <laughs> it does wobble. I really like that small little hint of uh, extra difficulty. Okay. And from there we had Michelle Warnke versus Mary Beth Wong. And, Michelle pulled ahead through the spin cycle and uh, just won it all. She is absolutely amazing on Team Ninja Warrior. So I don't, Oh yeah, I'm a little torn because they did mention in her, in the other episode uh, that she's, you know, with opening the gym and stuff, she's actually been training harder than ever. And I, I think that might be what we're seeing. I don't know if she's always, she's always been good, you know, but I find she's just amazing now. Yeah, she wasn't, she was always good and consistent, but she was never stand out, sort of like some of the bigger female names in the sport. Obviously, I very much knew <laughs> Michelle Warnke. She's, she's one of the few that have has gone up the warped wall and everything, but she doesn't, I, I don't feel like she's gotten the same neck name recognition as, per se, a Jesse Graff, Casey Gennon, Zaro, uh, you know, people like that, um, Megan. So, yeah, I'm glad that, on this show, she was able to showcase her talents a little bit more and stand out a little bit more. And you'd have to expect that the training that she has with her new gym really made a huge difference. Yeah, it seems to have. Um, so she's she again won her race. And so it went to the captains. We had Joe Morofsky versus Brian Wolcheski. And... Joe was well ahead, and then he fell on the spin cycle. Like, who saw that? I actually wow. looked away. I missed it on the first time because I just looked away. Like, all right, Joe's got it. Yeah, who would have saw that coming, man? I was I was so prepared for them to go into, like, a uh, sudden death, you know, with Chris Wolcheski versus Rob Morosky. Or, sorry, Joe Morosky. Um, but, yeah, it didn't happen, man. J- uh, Joe just made an error, but in an error in a part that I wouldn't have expected. I mean, who would have seen him making the error on the spin cycle? I mean, he's so consistent usually. Um, I'm not I'm, I'm not even sure what really happened. It, it seems like maybe he just slipped with his hands, but even with that, I mean, he's so usually consistent. It's really crazy that that happened. And I think even afterwards, he was kind of, like, shocked. <laughs> Yeah, he's just uh, not used to falling anywhere except for stage three. So it's, I'm sure it's a little jarring. Yeah. It's probably, so he's is human. Is what it's like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so well, he's he was human, in the finals. Least. Yeah, he was in the finals. So maybe this is like his stage three for Team Ninja Warrior, right? There we go. Yeah. So from there, we moved on to Party Time versus Storm Team Morofsky. So they started with Jennifer versus Mary Beth. Uh, they actually ended up fast forwarding this run. And they made it to a showdown at the wall and neither could make it up, unfortunately. So because Mary Beth had gotten there first, uh, they got the point. Yeah, not much to say about that one. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed they didn't show it. That would have been pretty exciting to watch. Uh, Although I guess it's a little repetitive because we had something similar happen a bit later. So, Yeah, good point. 
Yeah. Um, so from there we moved on to uh, Rob versus Jake, and yeah, he got soaked. I've never seen anybody get that <laughs> soaked on that obstacle. Like he really dosed himself with water uh, on the cargo net, and he ended up falling on the steps, and that was a rough fall too. I was really worried for Rob because when he slammed, um, when you saw him get off of it, I mean, he looked really dazed and almost concussed. It really was scary. Um, I certainly hope he was okay. It looked like he walked it off, but he was, and it looked like he was in rough shape and didn't know where he was at for a while. And, you know, in sports like this, brain trauma and stuff like that, you have to take that kind of stuff seriously. So I really hope he at least did some, um, I guess, concussion testing, made sure that, you know, in his brain and everything, he was okay. Because he's so young. I'd really hate for him to, you know, have some long-term effects from that fall. Yeah, I think that's one thing that we haven't brought up, and I haven't heard anybody else mention, even among the ninjas, is that this show is a little bit dangerous. Like, it's really... I'm kind of curious what the insurers think of this show with people getting injuries left and right. Even the ones we don't see. I've seen uh, pictures posted to Twitter and Instagram where their their shins are all banged up and they're bloody. And it looked more like they had been running a Spartan race than uh, the Ninja Warrior. Yeah, well, in, when I when I run my Tough Mudders and Spartan races, I, I have to sign death waivers. So <laughs> who knows what kind of waivers they have for this show, you know? Yeah, I'm just worried that I guess like you said they're not wearing helmets or anything. It's it's it is we saw especially tonight actually in the finale they're throwing themselves around and going off the course and like it's just all kinds of chaos going on. So they, I I just I don't know how you can make this a race and keep it safe, you know, yeah. as 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 safe as possible. Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, with American Ninja Warrior, you have the luxury of being a little bit more cautious with with these obstacle with obstacles. In this particular show and format, you really have to throw caution to the wind. So that's a really good point. Hopefully, we don't see too many injuries. The one that really scared me it was, man, it was like halfway through the season. Do you remember when it was a female athlete? She fell from a really really high distance into a short puddle of water and if she were to fall like head first i mean she could have broken her neck yeah and i can't remember who that was now that you say it yeah it, it, i remember she like hurt her shoulder or something like that but that was really scary um yeah let's hope we we never have to deal with um a really really serious injury on this show I, i'd hate to see that yeah i mean we have had some on american ninja warrior i guess when you look at it so i mean it isn't unheard of for sure yeah, but let, let's hope, you know, we don't see it too often. Yeah. And from there, we have the captain's run. We have Joe Morofsky versus Brian Arnold. Man, I, like, I just love these runs. Like, it just, you just want to take, you want to place bets on every one of them. Like, oh my God, like, this is something you would have, dis- we would have discussed just, you know, uh, offhand. Like, oh no, I think Joe could take Brian in a foot race. There's no <laughs> way. And, um, yeah. Geez, Joe missed a cycle again, and Brian won. Brian is just so consistent, and I don't know the uh, the spin cycle had Joe's Joe's number tonight. Yeah, it did. And Brian, he has a certain comfort with him, or kind of like confidence with him when it comes to the upper body obstacles that you can see. And I feel like when you know a lot of this whole sport is mental, you can definitely see that he has a mental confidence of tackling these upper body obstacles quite well. Um, so I think it's just more of that. But big ups to Joe Morowski. It was quite fun. And I like how he did the whole dead fish fall like at the very end. <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he, uh, they interviewed him afterwards and he's just basically said, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> they asked him, so what happened? He's yeah, if you know, tell me, cause I'm not sure. And from there, we moved over to the Expendables versus the Lab Rats. And it starts with Lucy Romberg versus Michelle Warnke. So it was like a big, big heavyweight fight going on here. Oh, so excited, man. <laughs> and if you had asked me, <laughs> I couldn't have guessed how that one was going to end. If you gave me a, If you gave me 100 tries, I wouldn't have guessed that they wouldn't be able to make it up the wall. That those two of all people would struggle with that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see that coming. But before that, everything kind of went exactly how I imagine it to be. 
uh, with, you know, Lucy Romberg kind of beating her at the foot race with some of the more agility based obstacles. And then, you know, Warnke just beast moding it with the upper body obstacles. I definitely saw that coming. But yeah, when it came to the very end. You know, it's tough. That warped wall is really tough, especially when you're a lot shorter than, you know, the, the male athletes. So I, I can't really fault them for it. Yeah. And you could see like that it was the nice in a way it was the nice thing about it. You could see the difficulty It was their grip. They couldn't like their feet were just sliding. Like there wasn't a matter of we know they can do it and we know they have the mm-hmm. technique down. It was just their feet were not gripping on the wall for one reason or another. Yeah, that warped wall looked really slippery, like just no traction in their feet whatsoever. Okay, and from there we moved over to, oh, so uh, Michelle had got there first, so they got the point. And from there we moved over to Alan Keneally versus Chris Wilczewski. And Alan got hung up on the spin cycle, then Chris did, and then Alan falls off the side of the course and uh, ended up losing the, the match. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't. I thought he was disqualified when that happened. Yeah, I, I was really confused because they didn't really address if he was still in it or not with this particular run. But then we saw him run up the the warped wall, so he must have still been in it. Um, I'm glad that they didn't disqualify him for him because that kind of would have been cheap <laughs> in many ways. But yeah, it's unfortunate, man. Um, a lot of people slipping off the side of the um, the the course this episode. I don't know yeah. what's going on. <laughs> it was a little weird to have that happened twice in the uh, the final episode uh and from there we went to the captain's run we had brian wilczewski versus uh, kevin bull so kevin was way ahead he had a good lead going and then he ended up falling on the dancing dancing stones like it's just a nasty spill too that's crazy man he tried that leap and th- this is what we were talking about before where it's like why are you trying for that leap when you're so far ahead right um Kevin Bull, he was beast moding it. He was going really fast. So big ups to him. He definitely has speed. Yeah, yeah. And I guess that's the ones that really make the least amount of sense. When you're that far ahead, like why would you take that risk, I guess? But I think they're just used to being able to skip over things like that and uh not giving it a lot of thought. Yeah. I just really hope competitors are like are watching this show and being like, next season, I am not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that meant that the lab rats actually swept both rounds. Like they did not lose a match. Yeah. They're really impressive, man. And, and you were right when, when you were previewing it saying consistency, you know, an all around just consistent group, um, would do, do really well on the show. And you were completely right. Yeah. Yeah. And so from there, they, it was the lab rats versus party time. So we starts with, it starts with, uh, in the final relay, that is. And they had Michelle versus Jennifer at the first part with Jake going up against Brian in the middle, uh, Brian Wolcheski, that is, and then Brian Arnold versus Chris Wolcheski to, to finish it off. Yeah, all makes sense. Uh, Je- yeah, Jennifer made uh, has made a name for herself this season, too, because she, you know, she's going up against Michelle Warnke, which is no mean feat, and she they were pretty even, right? She held her own. Oh, yeah, Tevin Year has been great this whole season, man. Yeah, Um and then, so once they tagged in, it was Jake versus Brian. Uh, he got hung up on the spin cycle, but they were pretty much dead even at the top of the wall. Uh, pretty close anyway. Close enough that when they hit the salmon ladder, it was more or less even. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it was so close heading for the tower climb. But Brian, I, that was one of the more exciting runs for the tower climb I've seen. Like it was like it would seem like it was anybody's race. But uh, Brian's just amazing at that. <laughs> Man, you know, Chris Wolcheski is really good, but Brian Arnold, man, he is a beast when it comes to these upper body obstacles. I, I felt like Chris Chris would need so, kind of like a buffer to, to um, have a chance against Brian Arnold. And, yeah, it was it was too close to call for him. And, you know, I feel bad for anybody trying to go against Brian Arnold with that last obstacle. Yeah, and that meant that the finale then, or the final matchup was going to be team tnt versus party time oh so excited because when it comes to the two people that i was like they're gonna kill this last obstacle and i'd love to see them go against each other would be travis rosen versus brian arnold i was so excited to see that matchup 
Yeah, now that you say that, I hadn't really considered that. That is probably like the dream team for the final tower climb, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, so I uh, circling back to something we said earlier, I was really disappointed to see that they were just going to be running the same one that they had done for the for the uh, the previous relays. But it is what it is. So we got um, they ran the course again. And the women went first again. It was Jennifer versus Joyce. And, oh, sorry, I guess we haven't mentioned Team TNT in this episode. So that's Jennifer <laughs> versus Joyce Shabazz. Um, and then it was Jake versus Adam Arnold. And Brian Arnold versus Travis Rosen to uh, to pull down the last leg. Collectively, is Team TNT the oldest team? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, that's that's what I was thinking. Um, I'm I'm just so happy to see them in the finals. I mean, that is such an impressive feat to to make. Yeah, I I really don't know what to make of it. Like they were so they were strong and they were good. Um, yeah, I just wouldn't have predicted this to be the final two teams. I mean, we didn't even come close. Oh no way! Yeah, I I did not see these two teams in the finals. <laughs> no way. Um, I'm really happy that they that they did that. These were the two teams though. It um it makes sense, and I'm just glad that it, it showcases a lot of different talents of competitors that we don't traditionally think about when we think of the the top competitors of the sport. So I'm really glad that these competitors got their shine. Yeah. So when we when the race starts off, Jennifer takes the lead. Uh, so she has the lead at the tag. Uh, so for a course tester in Kansas City, Brian Arnold made the uh, the right choice in, in picking her, I'd say, for his team. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then we had Jake versus Adam. Jake closed some of that gap. They were more or less even by the time they get to the salmon ladder. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the time Brian and Travis did. Uh, yeah, they, then, were, they were neck and neck. Yeah, yeah. That was like really, really exciting way to end it all. But then Travis flew sideways off the course. Oh, yeah, as soon as that happened, oh, so brutal. Because I was so excited to see them go neck and neck in this final tower climb. But once that happened, I mean, there you you just can't make up a deficit like that. He he tried his hardest, but oh, it was so unfortunate to see because it really, I I, I you know it is it is Travis's fault for for you know not, I guess, um, jumping all the way off of that that ladder, but. It really sucks to see it being part of the course design, being part like messing up some of the finals, you know. Yeah, a little bit. Like you would have, it would have been nice to have that photo finish type thing happen, but yeah, it you know it was still good. Yeah, at the end of the day, you know, it, it is Travis's. Um, he should have watched his dismount a little bit closer. All right, so that is the final wrap up for Team Ninja Warrior. We'll be. Uh... We'll be missing it for sure for a while. We've been talking about this since the beginning of the new year, really. I mean, it's been quite a while. Yeah, we've been covering for a while. It's it's kind of sad to see it, you know, over. But I I so thoroughly enjoyed this show. I'm so glad that, you know, the producers or whoever thought of this show, um, it, it, you know, it came to light. I'm really glad that Esquire Network um, was able to give this show a chance and that it made, you know, um, such an impact on their station. Um I'm just so glad in general that everybody was involved and it came out to be such a huge hit. And big ups to Brian Arnold. I'm really, I'm, I'm thoroughly happy that he got his spotlight to shine again. Kind of remind the audience that he is one of the top, top, top um, athletes in this entire sport. Obviously, we knew that, but he didn't get the shine that he probably deserved last season in American Ninja Warrior. So I'm really excited to see him coming into this next season of American Ninja Warrior. And uh, yeah, overall, what's your final thoughts of the whole show in general, man? Really enjoyed it. Two big thumbs up. Absolutely uh, think they nailed the format. That's not true. (laughs) I was like, okay, if you think so. (laughs) I don't even know why I said that. But the, uh, I was trying to think of everything I liked. I, I, I guess by format, I, I know what I was thinking. So I like the the running side by side. I think that adds a lot to the sport. It makes it almost into a new sport in a way, and it oh, makes yeah. it extremely exciting to watch. Yeah, it's such a great dynamic, and it's such an exciting type of um, 
type of take on the sport. I, I really enjoyed it a lot. Okay, so from there, we're going to move on to our first uh, fan of the week, month. I guess it's been a while, so we'll say fan of the month. Yeah, uh, fan so, of the month. Yeah, we'll go fan of the month. So fan of the month uh, is actually Julius Ferguson, a.k.a. The Black Jewels, a.k.a. Jedi. Uh, he's been reaching out to us on Twitter lately, and he sent us his uh a video of his submission for season eight. And it's really cool. It's actually really different from most. Uh, he gives his life story as a rap slash poem, I guess, would you call it Bijan? Yeah. Yeah. He, he pretty much does. Uh, yeah. Poetry rap. I, um, it, not just that the lyrics are really strong and he kind of connects it all together with uh, both Ninja Warrior and his life story. It's really creative. I really enjoy these creative takes on submission videos. It really stands out. Not just that, you can just see, like, just excitement and charisma flowing through his body and his, um, just his presence in general. I thoroughly enjoyed this. He's dancing, he's rapping, he's got a really compelling story, he's doing, like, impressive athletic feats. Like, this was such a fun video to watch, man. I loved it. Yeah, it was really, uh, really a strong contender. I don't know uh, what city he'd be running. I guess he's from Baltimore, right? So I guess that would be Philadelphia. Then we'll see if he's going to be, if he's made it on the show or not when that comes around. But uh, thank, yeah, thank, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, I'm gonna call you Julius. I don't know if you. <laughs> uh, so thank you, Julius, and thank you for for shout, giving me a shout on uh, Twitter and and being so supportive. Really appreciate it. And uh, it's funny because I went back and looked at where our downloads have been coming from lately, and we've gotten more downloads from Baltimore than anywhere on this past episode. So I'm hoping maybe he's spreading the word. And if you are, thank you very much. It's it's definitely uh, seems to be making a difference. Go Baltimore, man. And uh, big ups for his uh, rap video, too. He's got some good music out there. Yeah, we noticed. So in the in his submission video, it shows a little award. It was the Hip Hop Rap Album of the Year at the 2014 IMEA Awards. That's the International Music and Entertainment Association for his album called Black Market. So when I saw that, I started digging into it just to see, you know, what it was all about. It's for uh, it's an international organization to promote independent music. And so when I went and looked at the nominations, he actually not was nominated for the hip hop rap artist of the year and hip hop rap song of the year for his song war zone. So we're going to include a link to the video for war zone along with his a and W eight submission video uh, in the show notes. So you should definitely check it out. It's very cool. Yeah, it's good stuff. So the big thing on social media lately is the coming uh, tryouts, the, the qualifiers for American Ninja Warrior are starting up here. So the qualifiers for Atlanta, Georgia are actually coming up next week. So they're, it seems like they just came up out of nowhere that now it's, it's on and people are getting their calls and I didn't experience this in previous years, but it's really, I can see why it would be so nerve wracking. There are so many people just waiting to get that call. Um, So it's, it's really interesting to to be a part of that this year. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I it, it's it's crazy that I never really expected or it never really dawned on me just how quickly this show is going to be filming. It's filming so soon from now, and um, it makes sense because they have to do post production and everything. But yeah, I'm excited for everybody that's gotten the call, and it's going to be such a fun season. And I'm so thoroughly happy. We have quite a large contingent of female athletes running the season, or at least from what we're seeing um, of the people that have made the Atlanta qualifiers. Uh, yeah. A lot of women, a large female presence, and I'm really expecting a lot from them. Yeah. And in late May is when the Philadelphia run is going to be, and I'm going to try to be there for that. I'm still trying to work out all the details, trying to get, my tickets sorted out or how I'm going to get in. Yeah. So one thing I didn't even know existed, and I I don't know if they've done this in previous years, but people have actually been compiling a list of the names of people that are going to be at the Atlanta, Georgia tryouts next week. So we'll throw a link in the show notes. If you want to check those out, 
Uh, that's pretty cool. You can see some of the names from Team Ninja Warrior on there, and maybe some of your favorites will be there. So that is it for this week's podcast. Uh, thank you all for joining us. We can be reached on Facebook. We are on Twitter. That's at Ninja Podcast. Or if you'd like to email us, you can reach us at rich at ninjapodcast.com. And once again, I forgot to mention Atomic Climbing Holds. So if you are in the market for some good quality, affordable climbing holds, you should go to our website. That's ninjapodcast.com. Click on the banner for Atomic and use our podcast, or sorry, use our discount code of podcast and you can save yourself 10%. Thank you all for listening and I hope you have a great week. Peace, y'all. A special thanks to Kathleen Martin for the song Player v. Player Remastered from Bandcamp.com. Thank you all for listening and have a lovely day.